and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. Welcome to The Future is Female. This is the show where we find the extraordinary in every woman. I'm delighted to introduce my guest today, a veterinarian, Dr. Salihato Kuzaima Muhammad Ali. Uh, she's a prominent figure on social media, known by her handle, Dr. Ima Vet on TikTok, and um, known for using her platform to educate and challenge societal norms regarding animal treatment. So I'm delighted to have her on the show. Hello, Dr. Uma. Thank you for being Hi, here. Marisa. Thank you so much for having me. Today. So, so many of us <clears throat> have no idea what it takes to uh, become a, a vet. So maybe mm. you can tell us your your uh, journey, a little bit about yourself and your journey into um, veterinary, the, the veterinarian field. Um, okay. How did you become so passionate about wanting to work <laughs> with animals? All right. So, okay. Um, first of all, I'm Dr. Salihatu Guzayma binti Mamad Ali. Basically, people called me uh, Dr. Ima. It's I think it's easier for, for <laughs> you as well. It's a long name. Yeah. So, um, I've been... Uh, uh, I graduated uh, from University Putra, Malaysia in 2009 mm -hmm. in a degree of uh, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. So the journey um, is about five years. Mm -hmm. So the DVM course is uh, five years. And actually during the study, we actually learn lots of things, uh, anatomy, physiology, pathology, and anything related to medi uh, medicine. And also the different species mm -hmm. that um, our patients are, which it's not specific for one species on, only. So it's it's fun. I would say it's fun, uh, but also it's tough. Mm, okay. Yeah. So so I I think I don't know very many people who have taken the kind of learning pathway into veterinary medicine. Mm -hmm. talk, talk to me a little bit about that. Um, so it's a five year uh, yeah, degree program. Course, yeah. So what do you actually need to study? I think about so I think about. Um, human medicine, right? I think about doctors um, who have to, you know, study medicine, they kind of go focus in. But for the veterinary services, you have to know about all animals yeah. and how to, how to <laughs> take care of them all. How do you manage such a wide field? Yeah, I mean, to me, five years is not enough though, to cover <laughs> like all species of animals. So basically, we're, we're focusing on domestic animals. Okay. Um, the uh, companion, companion animals, and um, more to like, you know, livestock as well. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, of course, different species have different uh, uniqueness, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's what kind of fun. So mm -hmm. so taking care of kind of wild animals, mm -hmm. that zoology is a whole kind of different other field and areas. Um, actually, right? it's it's kind of. Um, you know, overlapping uh, job. So basically, uh, vets also are some some of my f uh, vet friends are also in the wildlife uh, industry. Oh wow! So it's quite interesting. Yeah. Okay. Have you always wanted to to be a vet? Like, have you always known that you wanted to work with animals? Uh yes. Um, I think it's since I was small because my dad is the one that um, actually instilled the you know the feelings of how to love and, and care for animals. So initially, of course, our cats, it's very common, uh, <laughs> pets since uh, we were small. So, and then it seems like, you know, I have, I mean, the history was I have, I have this cat named Rentong because he's very black <laughs> in colour. That, that's our first cat, our that's family, family cat. Family yeah, family, yeah, family cat. cat. So uh, that's the first cat that we actually um, took care of him, like, you know, as a true, True pets, because like a basically, family member. Yeah, because yeah. basically we just all, um, just feed the strays and whatnot. So at one time, of course, uh, when we we're dealing with lives, and also we have to deal with death. Mm. So that's the time when I, I, I think that um, it's it's quite difficult back then to get you know treatments to get to get um, medical attention for for our mm. for our pets at that moment. So, um, and I see that, you know, cats, as we, all animals, they cannot talk. They mm. cannot, you know, they, they, they're voiceless. So, so basically, we have to understand them well. And we have to be their voice to actually um, help them. Mm. So at one point, I, I thought, that, oh, okay, I, I think I'm, I'm, I really love animals, no matter what kind of animals. So I think uh, I have to do, I have to be someone. I have to be someone that can help this poor, you know, voiceless animals that probably, I don't know, I don't know how actually uh, at that moment, but then, uh, then I, s I think I have to be someone. Okay, so it's like a calling, animals. a calling yeah, yeah. to speak up on behalf of yes. voiceless animals. Yes. 
So which came first? So you have two um, two veterinary practices. Mm -hmm. You've got one in Kota Kemuning in Shalam yes. and another one in Bandar Bandar Sri Damansara. So which came first? The, the, the vet, Kota Kemuning one. But the vet practices mm -mm. or the social media work? Oh, the, the vet practice. <laughs> the vet practice ah, was, okay. Yes. So I actually, I, I didn't expect that, you know, because um, at that time when we graduated, the social media is not that, you know, hype. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not this has only been a few recent years. <laughs> yeah, <isn't it>? yeah. <laughs> I think since PKP, it's been like, you know, very aggressive, mm. that kind of things. So, um, uh, I have my Instagram like quite some time. So, I mean, since I graduated, we already have, we already know that Instagram exists. Mm. Um, so, basically, we just, you know, sharing like personal, uh, no, more to personal life things. So, uh, but at the same time, when I'm practicing, uh, since I've had my own practice, so I thought that probably we can do something beneficial through this platform. Mm. Yeah. So, how did it start? How did the kind of social media work take mm. off? Like, what was the um, idea behind it? Did you expect it to take off no. as it did? <laughs> no, no, actually, no. I, I, um, I don't expect at all that um, I will have, you know, this kind of uh, following so-called yeah, yeah. achievement, <laughs> yes. right? So um, actually it starts from, um, I think since, since PKP in 2020. Mm -hmm. So basically uh, at the moment, it seems like there are so many people are delivering, you know, um, good and bad um, deliverables. It depends how actually they have their content mm. in. So I thought that, um, I, um, initially, TikTok is not my preferred platform because I thought that TikTok is something, you know, people keep on dancing and you know, sharing. <laughs> well, oh, it, start, it started yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So I was like, oh, why? why? So, so I, I think eh, probably we can start something else. Mm. So why not we do some sharings, you know, some educational posts, um, uh, awareness uh, through TikTok. Mm. So then I start like, you know, very very simple simple information and then i give um uh, if, if you know sometimes uh, some people have tips sometimes like tips yang pelik -pelik kan? mm. uh, so sometimes i just you know i give some explanation and give my comments on that yeah tips. so so i think what what i also enjoy about your content is that you will try to correct misinformation exactly. so you will uh, sometimes stitch a video together and to correct that using your kind of veterinary medical uh, mm -hmm. um, knowledge. So, how has it been in those years of being online, mm -hmm. being a social media presence? The idea essentially was to educate people, yes. to give, the, give them the right information, equip them with knowledge exactly. on how to care for our animals. How has that been the, the um, past few years? And I ask because I know how wonderful it is to be connected to people online, but also how cruel people yes. can be online <laughs> behind a screen uh, and yes. being anonymous, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, there's pros and cons. So basically, what I did was, um, what I did um, is basically to educate and create the awareness and, you know, delivering things that probably some pet owners won't get it outside mm -hmm. or probably they don't have the source um, to get uh, such information um, it's not easy because mm. sometimes um, you know during um, if you are delivering the information uh, in these platforms basically we cannot like you know drag it long yeah. so basically because they were like oh boring they need so long you need to capture attention in the first yeah. few seconds yes right? yeah. sometimes yeah. in 30 seconds to one minute so probably can extend to 90 minutes should be enough mm. but then it's not easy for 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 us especially the content creator to um you know to summarize things in very short video yeah. especially something as complex as yeah. pet care right like <laughs> exactly mm. so basically sometimes they they will have um, following um, videos mm. attached or the easiest way is that please go and look for your vets for mm. for the information so basically we're leading these um, people to uh, search for qualified vets yeah. instead of you know asking online or asking unnecessarily people do, do you that. think people <coughs> recognize the um, importance of veterinarian work um i would say nowadays um it gets better okay, okay? uh 
compared to last time where it seems that people don't really appreciate vet um vet profession mm. because they thought that oh dr ayam oh a doctor <laughs> yeah that kind of things so basically they thought I that yeah that in a long time yeah, so <laughs> they thought that oh animals is just animals so mm. they don't really appreciate the animal lives so probably that's what leads to vet is not being appreciated much mm. um and but nowadays it seems like uh, more people are uh, having pets mm. and they they understand that the uh, uh, pets health is very important um so they know how to reach out but of course there are certain group of people still have their own opinions and also their preference so basically we're trying our best to at least guide them mm. to to get our uh, uh right pathways as a muslim vet mm -hmm. do, when you treat uh canine patients mm -hmm. do you get pushback from that from uh, people online yeah um all the time, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time. Um, some people still don't understand that our job is not limited to certain animals only, because when we when we say that we're a vet, we are covering, like I said, more species of mm -hmm. animals, including uh, canine and porcine. Oh. Okay, so basically, um, some some people might say, oh, uh, you have choices to choose your patients, mm -hmm. but to me, I took my oath to treat whatever animals that I can. So some people also say that, oh, probably you can leave these dogs and pigs to non-Muslims. Non mm. Why are you so passionate mm. to treat these kind of animals? Well, I say there's no um, nothing, no, no lines mentioned in Quran that I cannot do or do good to animals. Mm. So basically this is what I've been holding on uh, is Islam itself wants the people to be kind to any kind of species or any kind of all creations, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And and also, I think as as a doctor, you can't pick and choose your patients. Yes. You take everyone and treat every yes. living thing the same. Exactly. Okay. How how do you um, go about trying to change that? I know it's not your duty to do so, but it, through your um, your content and your work, mm -hmm. you are forcing people who are uncomfortable um, with with the idea of a Muslim vet mm -hmm. uh, treating canine patients, you're forcing them to reconsider in, in a way. How do you um, deal with the pushback that comes, the negative uh, comments and the uh, criticism that comes your way. How do you s strive to change people's minds? Um, I mean, uh, what what I would stand on is that um, there are still people that understand, mm. and probably they don't understand before. But then, you know, when we give you know some awareness and how actually we can manage these kind of animals, they truly understand it. So um, I. Frankly speaking, there are some days I would feel down when people keep on backlashing, you know, things. I mean, this is my job, okay? Yeah. If you don't understand, it's okay. But then, um, saying bad things, yeah, you know. Yeah, you don't have to be mean about yeah, it, right? Yeah, it's very cruel. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's very, oh, don't you feel if, if, any, if someone said that to you, what would you feel? Mm. So sometimes I feel, mm, okay, okay, it's okay. But then I always, I always focus on the people or the group of people that, really want to hear it mm. so yeah some people don't want to hear it although we have explained it but i always um believe that there are still people want to know and should know right yeah so that's why i keep on going although although it's it's, it's quite challenging well what um what are some of the m more common um health problems that you encounter uh, particularly with companion animals mm. what 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 would you say are the kind of majority of your cases? Um, basically, it's more to you know diseases that can be prevented. For example, mm -hmm. things related to viral diseases, um, overpopulation of animals. So basically, we are focusing on how to prevent um, mm. uh, diseases and how to prevent the uh, unwanted birth of these animals. Basically. So um, it's very important to focus on this thing because this is the basic one. This, you know? this is the spaying and the neutering. Yeah, right? neutering, spaying. So do you do you mm -hmm. think people are just not aware of the need to neuter and spay? 
Um, yeah, still, still. still. Okay. Uh, although uh, it's 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 improving. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of uh, people's awareness on how actually um, uh, spaying or neutering is um, beneficial. What, why why animals. do you think they don't? Um, there are many factors. Oh, yeah, okay. many factors. Uh, one is of course kesian, mm. right? Oh, they will get sick, or is it? It isn't hurts. It, them, yeah, it hurts. It will be pain. painful. Mm -hmm. And then one is um, religious um, uh, context. Mm. So some people still uh, thought that um, because it's you no know, kilaf in uh, some of the, you know, the what we call it, the uh, idea of certain group of people sometimes. So they thought that um, doing spaying or neutering the pets uh, is uh, berdosa. Mm. You know, it's harmful. So, but but usually we have. Um, discuss and get information from the you know the mufti mm, and whatnot. So basically, right. we're we're referring to them yeah, as well. I, I notice that you often uh, refer to um, kind of religious scholars yes, or muftis yes. for fatwas and, and exactly. the like in your work, right? Yeah, yeah. Because because I don't want to you know short sendiri you know uh, <laughs> delivering my uh, my my job because some people still don't understand. So I, it's really important for me to get knowledge on that as well so that I can deliver at least the basic one because mm -hmm. in detail probably you still have to search for the um, you know the mufti the 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 exact person Understood. to discuss about uh, more religious mm. uh, things. So kind of spaying and neutering is a big part of the kind of preventative mm -hmm. treatment of, of animals. Yeah. Um, what, what are the kind of health issues? I, I wonder how we can prevent our um, companion animals, the, the animals that we live with, mm -hmm. from falling sick and having to kind of see the, the doctor. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So basically, the basic thing, like, like just like humans, um, uh, some diseases can be prevented uh, by vaccinations. So there are certain diseases that is very lethal to um, this uh, our our pets that can cause death if we're not if we're not uh, preventing it. For mm. example, doing vaccination, routine vaccination, routine checkup. So um, there are schedule for for this um, you know preventive uh, medicine that we actually can uh, apply to our patients and to, to the pets to prevent them to get sick like very often. So um, it's very important because we see that um, vaccinated pets actually um, healthier mm. and the chances of them to get sick or death, for example, um, is the risk is low compared mm. to um, some pet owners that don't vaccinate their pets and um, exposing their pets to uh, viral diseases and can cause death. So it's it's quite sad. Sad. Yeah. Dr. Ima, there are people who would argue that veterinary care is actually quite expensive. Yeah. They can't afford it. How, how would you respond to that? Is that is that fair to say that? Um, it's, it costs a lot to take a vet to an uh, take an animal to, to the, the vet. vet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would say um, I mean, things that I I can't you know um, argue, I can't re argue about that because basically I yeah mm. because I'm in this field so mm. I know the cost of the medication. Well, maybe maybe you can yeah. tell us. So I think for for the people who are not in the field, mm -mm. they don't really understand what goes into yeah. providing veterinary care for yes. our animals, right? Yeah. So the things that I would probably highlight is that the cost of the medications, the instruments, the you know, the machines that we have to have in our clinics mm. or practice is very, very, very expensive. And we don't have subsidy on that. Okay, we, we don't get the subsidy. So um, and then the medication sometimes we need to import from other countries and it's very expensive. So some something so sometimes it's it's very difficult for us as well because sometimes the pets need that medications, mm. but then it's very expensive for them. So, um, yeah, it's, it's quite hard, lah, basically. How, how does the um, veterinary medicine, does that evolve quite a fair bit when you, when you first started? Mm -hmm. um, how would you say veterinary medicine has evolved since, you know, over the years? Has it changed a lot? Yeah. How do you keep up with the um, latest advancements or the latest medicines, the techniques that you need to use with the equipments? Yeah, so just for information, um, uh, yearly we have to renew our APC, the Annual Practice Certificate. So basically, um, in order for us to uh, renew the APC for all vets that practice, 
is that we have to go for you know courses, seminars. So from that, actually, we get information, new information, new updates okay. about the current um, current situations in uh, veterinary fields and what are the you know things change right? right. More researches uh, has been done. So basically, we get the information from from that. So that's why it's it's not. It's not cheap as well because uh, <laughs> we need to pay to attend the seminars, the courses in order for us to renew our APC and to provide um, better service okay, for All of pets. that kind of goes into yeah, kind yeah. of veterinary care. I think we, we often think of kind of doctors and we think of healthcare costs mm -hmm. as um, a given that is going to be high, <laughs> but we don't think about the healthcare costs for our, yeah, our pets our and pets. animals. Are you seeing this industry grow? Are there young people who come to you and say, I'm going to study <laughs> veterinary, um, I'm going to be a vet in, in the future? Is it um, a field that you see is garnering a lot of interest? Yeah, um, it's it's quite of, you know, like a mushroom growing. Okay. Um, it seems like um, more new vet clinics is coming mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah just what, what you said um, the students especially the SPM students mm -hmm. they DM me and then say that doctor I want to be like you can you please guide me what ah. uh, are the pathways that probably I can go into how to be uh, a doctor like you so basically it's, it's quite interesting and, and it's like you know something that oh I've been uh, instilling this kind of um, good uh, you know, response from yeah. the youngsters, especially. So, um, and 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 as, uh, and of course, because last time uh, during our time, our classmates is about sixty plus, and now the class uh, for especially in UPM, they are uh, calling in like hundred twenty to hundred forty students. That is for one uh, one university. Um, another one is in UMK. Yeah, that's around 40, 45 to 50 students uh, per you year. Know, Dr. Ima, they say that this is why representation is so important. <laughs> you know, you can't imagine it until you see it. So yes, somebody yes, yes. watching you online can say, mm -hmm. she looks like me, she speaks wonderfully, I can be like her as well. So what would you say to aspiring veterinarians? How, what, what advice would you give to them? How, how do you advise them to follow kind of your, your career pathway? Um, one is that you have to be strong enough i mean to deal with you know difficult people most of the time right so well, the people more difficult yeah, than the animals yeah 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 <laughs> i would say because because okay the um some people say that oh i want to be in veterinary field because i don't have to deal with people you're wrong because basically you are dealing more with people because you don't really can communicate with yeah, your patients yeah. like directly unless you have to get history from your mm. um, the, the the pet owners which are humans so still we have to deal with them more and then you know we are dealing with multi-species um, mm. uh, patients as owner and basically the hard uh, the difficult one is of course uh, <laughs> The order? The, the people. The people, yeah. <laughs> the people. Yes. All right, so, so you would definitely encourage young people to, to um, start a career in this Yes, field. because it's, it seems like this, uh, this career give, you know, um, I mean, to me, me, me myself as, uh, as a vet, it's satisfying. You know, yeah. you can actually help uh, the owners and also, as well, of course, our patients, with, mm. which are the pets, in um, achieving a good health and education. So um, it is something that is it's not probably not cannot be done by everyone, mm. but then if you have the chance to go into this uh, career, please do it well. What's yeah. your long term goals for your kind of not just your veterinary practice mm -mm. but also your advocacy work on social media? Um, long term target. So basically, I I I, I just want everyone or most of the people are pet owners or not not specific for pet owners as well but for other people the society mm. they um, should understand that this is an ongoing process mm. so basically i i really hope that it can be continued um, by the youngsters yeah. to to you know to educate to create the awareness um, because I believe that I cannot do do this alone. Well, you're paving the way, so there <laughs> yeah. will there will be many others I following you. I hope so. You. I hope so. Yeah, inshallah. In, in the minute that we have left, I'd like to maybe you can tell our audience at home um, what you would like them to know about 
not just responsible pet care and pet health, but also the treatment of animals that share our spaces, that share our neighborhoods and communities and cities? Yeah, one thing is that um, you have to appreciate and uh, whatever creatures that actually exist in the world, uh, you have to understand that we coexist with them. Okay, so no matter um, how you hate them or probably you don't like them or probably afraid of them please don't do harm mm. please don't do harm so uh, that's why it's very important for us to actually um, understand the function of the vet okay the vet and also the people around us uh, because it, it is not um, one person or one particular um, group of people responsibilities but it actually involves everyone because if although you don't like animal but you understand okay this animal should not be kacau should not be disturbed and whatnot and you should understand also the people that actually manage them so that you won't cause harm to everyone mm. thank you so much thank Dr. you so much for this. being on the show and thank sharing you. some of your experiences and for your your good work on thank social you. media and real life thank you thank you that's all we have for you on this episode of the future is female i'm melissa idris signing off for the evening thank you so much for watching good night <laughs>